we are going to consider material usage variance or quantity variance. The formula which we have studied, you, do you remember the formula? Material usage variance is equal to standard rate into, please note, standard rate into, standard rate we know that is 2 rupees, standard quantity for actual output. What is standard quantity for actual output? That is very, very important. The standard quantity for actual output is given, it is to be calculated under the uh, material usage variance is the standard quantity for actual outputs is to be calculated from the, from the information given. Let us go to the question once again. The question says, standard quantity of material required for one ton of finished product is 25 units. Therefore, they say standard quantity is 25 and actual production is 80 tons. Therefore, standard quantity for actual production, that means, I repeat, Standard quantity of raw materials required for actual production. Actual production is 80 tons. Standard quantity is 25 tons. Therefore, standard quantity required for actual production. What is the standard quantity? Standard quantity of raw material. For example, for manufacturing 80 shirts, if the standard quantity of cloth is given as 2 meter. Therefore, the standard quantity of actual production of 80 shots is equal to 2 into 80, that is 160 meters. Same manner, we have to consider standard quantity of material required. This material is raw material for manufacturing finished product of 1 ton 25. Therefore, standard quantity of actual production is 25 into 80 that is equal to 2000. <laughs> Therefore, by applying the formula, material usage variance is the difference between standard quantity and actual quantity into actual uh, into standard rate. I repeat, standard rate into standard quantity minus actual quantity. What is the standard rate given? It is given in the question itself as 2 rupees. No doubt about it. Then 2 into standard quantity of actual production is 25 into 80. That is 2000 minus actual quantity. What is the actual quantity used? Opening purchase is 3000. Closing stock is 500. Opening stock is nil. Therefore, actual quantity is 3000 minus 500, which is equal to 2500. Standard rate into 2000 minus 2500 is equal to 2 into 500 is equal to rupees 1000 minus figure, which is also adverse. Adverse means unfavorable. Now, as I told you, material cost variance is the summary of material price variance plus material usage variance. That means material price variance is 2500 minus figure, material usage variance is 1000 minus figure. Therefore, material cost variance is 2500 plus 1000 minus 3500 minus 3500 is adverse. Therefore, therefore, you must remember the mathematical equation. Material cost is the sum total of material price variance plus material usage variance. But friends, there is an alternative formula for material cost variance. What is the formula? The formula is standard quantity into standard rate minus actual quantity into actual rate. What is standard quantity here? 2000. Standard rate is 
two, that is two thousand into two, four thousand minus actual quantity two thousand five hundred. Actual rate is three, therefore seven thousand five hundred. So four thousand minus seven thousand five hundred is also equal to minus three thousand five hundred, which is adverse, which we can call it as unfavorable. So adverse means unfavorable. That is, if this negative figure, we can take it as unfavorable or adverse. Not in all situations, as I told you, in the case of test for diagnosing COVID-19. Therefore, you have to consider the actual situation, case-to-case -case study, instead of by hearting the formula. So friends, you have any questions on this particular uh, problem? We are going to conclude the standard costing at this point of time, that is variance analysis. So those who want to ask questions, you can unmute or you can make use of the chat box. The one question from one of our friends, that is, Uh, test book page number. Uh, there are so many test books and that page number is not very relevant for you. I have referred one book. That is the page number. That book may not be available with you. Friends, now we are going to ratio analysis. Ratios. What do you mean by ratio? A ratio is a relationship between two figures. Ratio between the heights, ratio between quantity, ratio between prices, ratio between year, all these numbers or quantity or value, it may be a relation, that's all. So please note that a ratio is only a relation. To measure the relation, ratio between mark obtained by the students, Mr. A, Mr. B, the ratio of marks obtained, the age or the height or the quantity, whatever may be. Therefore, please note that as we have discussed in the case of variance, uh, many students are not very clear what is variance, what is standard costing, etc. I have made it very simple to all of you that variance is nothing but a variation. That's all. But if you are not understanding the basic concept, you cannot follow the classes, you may not be able to understand what I am discussing. Therefore, the basic concept is very, very important. Similarly, in the case of ratio, a ratio is only a relation, a relation between two figures. Directly, we will come to a problem. Uh, an examination problem asked by Indira Gandhi National Open University, one of the previous examinations. Question is, the following is the condensed balance sheet and profit and loss account of Bharat Pumps Limited. Balance sheet is a statement showing statement of affairs as on a particular day. Balance sheet consists of liabilities and assets and assets must be equal to liability. In this balance sheet, you can see liability total is 4,70,000. Assets total is 4,70,000. You can see liability consists of share capital, 1 lakh, reserves, 1 lakh, debentures. Debentures are loans carrying interest. Debentures are not capital. The interest rate is 12.5%, 1 lakh. Sundry creditors, 1,40,000. Sundry creditors means amount payable to suppliers. When you are purchasing material on credit basis, you are required to make payment to them. That balance is called a sundry creditors or account payables, which means amount payable to suppliers. Provision for taxation means provision for income tax. Income tax payable, 30,000 rupees. 
So the total of liability is 4 lakh 70 thousand. And the total of assets you can see. Plant and machinery, net of depreciation, which means plant and machinery, 22 lakh 50 thousand is after deducting depreciation. Depreciation means wear and tear or reduction in value. Inventory is 80,000. Inventory means the closing stock of raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, tools and spares. Debtors means amount receivable from customers. It is also called account receivables. Inventory 80,000. Debtors 80,000. Bank balance that is balance in the bank that is as on 31st March 1991, that is 50,000. Prepaid expense is 10,000. Prepaid expense means expenses paid in advance, rent paid in advance, or electricity charges paid in advance, or salary paid in advance. That is what is called prepaid expenses. The total is 4,70,000. So, first of all, you should understand the balance sheet. Analysis of balance sheet consists of liabilities and assets. Asset total is equal to liabilities. That is because we are making use of scientific method of accounting. A scientific method that is called double entry system. For any transaction there is two aspects. And there is debit and credit usage. We are using the word debit and we are using the word credit. Then we are using the word journal entry. For every debit, there must be an equal credit. That is why we call it a scientific method. It is something like a Newton's third law of motion. All of you know what is Newton's third law of motion. To every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Similarly, to every debit, there is equal and opposite credit. Similarly, for every asset, there must be equal and opposite liability. It is something like your substance and shadow. When you are walking in the daytime, your shadow will follow you. When you are walking, the shadow will follow you because of the sunlight. Then the asset is treated as the substance, liability is treated as the shadow. Whenever you are creating any asset, you are creating liability also. I mean, when you are purchasing a land, you are borrowing money from the bank or you are making use of your own funds. That is why the share capital or own funds. And own funds is a liability when you differentiate between you and the business. You and the business are different entities. You have to consider your assets and your capital. You are investing capital in the business. Then the business is borrowing money from you and creating assets like land, building, furniture, etc. Therefore, when you are creating an asset, there is a liability. Liability may be on account of own funds or borrowed funds. Borrowed funds carrying interest, whereas own funds carrying no interest. But if there is a surplus in the business, you can get a dividend. If there is no profit, no div dividend. But in the case of borrowed funds, in even in the absence of profit, you are liable to make payment of interest. Therefore, the balance sheet concept is asset must be equal to liability. A liability may be own funds or loan funds. Own funds means equity. Owners funds. Borrowed funds means the amount carrying interest. And if the asset value is less than the liability, a situation where the value of the land, building, furniture, etc., is less than the, the resale value 
or realizable value of your asset is not sufficient enough to liquidate your liability. That is a situation where you can treat it as bankrupt. You have no money to repay your loans, like Government of India balance sheet. If you take the Government of India balance sheet, the total assets of Government of India is only half of the liabilities. That means the assets are not sufficient enough to liquidate the borrowings. Every year, government is borrowing money. And every year, government is borrowing money for making payment of interest on loan already availed, not for the purpose of principal amount. That's why every year, the loan account is increasing and you are only paying interest. For making payment of interest, you are borrowing again. That means your principal amount is increasing. So the, uh, the this is very beautiful, my dear friends, to understand the balance sheet. A balance sheet is a statement of affairs of a business enterprises or business undertaking. Now, with this basic information, I have shown the balance sheet. And in the balance sheet, I have mentioned about various items. In this category, you can find out that there are two types of assets and two types of liabilities. When you analyze the balance sheet liability side, share capital is a long-term funds. Reserves and surplus is honest funds or long-term funds. Debentures are long-term borrowings. Therefore, it is a long-term funds consists of share capital, reserves and surplus, debentures. Whereas, sundry creditors, that is amount payable to suppliers, you may get a credit period of two months or three months or one month. Suppose you purchase raw material or finished goods for manufacturing or trading, the supplier will give you two months time, sometimes they will give you one month's time, very rarely they will give you three months time. Therefore, making payment within a period of one year is called short term borrowings. The amount payable to sundry creditors is nothing but a borrowing from the supplier. Provision for taxation is also payable within the year. Therefore, in this particular example, the sundry creditors and provision for taxation are short term liabilities. Whereas, share capital, resource and surplus debentures are long term funds, out of which share capital and resource are own funds and debentures are loan funds. Debenture means it is a bond. It is carrying interest. Debenture holders are not owners. Debenture holders are the money borrowed from the debenture holders and it carries interest. Whereas share capital, no interest. If there is profit, you can make payment of dividend. It is called a sharing of profit is called a dividend. Now with this, let us go to asset side of the balance sheet. In the asset side of the balance sheet, also there are long term assets and short term assets. Long term assets consist of plant and machinery which can be utilized for more than one year or many years. In the case of inventory, it is lossy stock of raw material, finished goods, work in progress, tools and spares and it is a short term asset. Debtors, amount receivable from customers are called debtors, it is a short term amount. That means when you are making a sale to your customer, you have make a condition that the sale proceed should be remitted within a period of one month or two months or three months depending upon the understanding between the customer and you. And therefore, it is a short term asset which can be realized within a period of one year. Similarly, bank balance is your liquid asset. What do you mean by liquid asset? It can be easily converted into cash, cash at bank. During demonetization period, it was very difficult to consider the bank balance as a liquid asset or a short term asset 
because people find it very difficult to withdraw the money from the bank. They were making huge queue, and you can see at that point of time it was a very difficult situation. But friends, generally we can consider bank balance as liquid assets. What do you mean by liquid? Easily convertible into cash, and cash balance is also a liquid asset. Prepaid expense. That means expenses paid in advance. And that can be realized within a year. In this example, plan and machinery is a long term asset. Inventory, debtors, bank balance, prepaid expenses are current assets or short term assets. Short term assets are called current assets. Long term assets are called fixed assets. Short term liabilities are called current liability. Long term liabilities are called long term borrowings or long term funds. With this, what is the question? So, they have asked the question based on the additional information. What is additional information you want? Look at the top profit and loss account for the year ended 31.391 is given. You can see profit and loss account is always for a period ended or an year ended. Don't write profit and loss account as on. Please not. Profit and loss account is not as on a particular date. It is for the whole year period. Sales for the whole year, purchase for the whole year, interest for the whole year, expenses for the whole year. Therefore, you make use of the term for the year ended. Please don't commit mistake. Profit and loss account is always for the year ended. Whereas balance sheet is as on a particular date because balance sheet is a statement of affairs as on a particular date as on today what is your cash balance what is your bank balance what amount is receivable from customers like that so the additional information given is sales 6 lakhs cost of sales 4 lakh 20 thousand Profit before interest and taxes, 1,80,000. Interest, therefore, sales minus cost of sale is 1,80,000. Less interest is 12,500. Balance is 1,67,500. ,00, and deducting tax, 40,000. So, balance is 1,27,500. So, with this information, you are required to calculate the following. I have already mentioned net fixed assets, net current assets, current ratio, liquid assets ratio, current assets to capital employed ratio and you are required to comment on the liquidity of Bharat Fund Limited. Liquidity means the availability of funds for the day to day operation. Now let us solve one by one. The first question is net fixed assets. Net fixed asset is equal to Fixed assets minus depreciation. Fixed assets minus depreciation. That is equal to net fixed assets. In this problem, they have given in the balance sheet planned and missionary net of depreciation. That is 2,50,000. Therefore, answer to question number one is 2,50,000. It is very clear. The net fixed asset is after depreciation. Now they ask the second question that is the net current assets. Net current asset is current assets minus current liability. The formula for net current asset. The net current asset is also called working capital. Yesterday we have seen net current asset is also called working capital. What is working capital? current assets minus current liability. So that is the question number two. For computing question number two, net current assets, that is working capital, CA minus CL. CA means current assets, CL means current liability. How to compute? We can see first current assets. In the balance sheet, you can see the current assets are short term assets that is inventory, debt test, 
bank balance, prepaid expenses. Here we have taken inventory, debtors, bank balance, prepaid expenses. 80,000, 80,000, 50,000, 10,000. Therefore, total current asset is equal to 2,20,000. Then we, we will see what is current liability. Current liability is equal to short term liabilities. Here I have mentioned short term liabilities are sundry creditors or provision for taxation, etc. So here you can see current liability, that means short term liability, that means the amount payable immediately within a period of one year. Therefore, sundry creditors 140,000, provision for taxation 30,000. Total current liability one lakh seventy thousand. Therefore, friends, net current asset is equal to current asset minus current liability, which is also equal to working capital WC, which is equal to CA minus CL. Here, net working capital is equal to two lakh twenty thousand minus one lakh seventy thousand, which is equal to fifty thousand rupees. So. The answer to question number two is 50,000 rupees. Now, let us see what is the next question. Well, the next question is calculate current ratio. So, the formula for current ratio is very important, dear friends. Always you remember what is the current ratio? Ratio is a relation between two figures. A current ratio is a relation between current asset and current liability. Therefore, CA divided by CL, current asset by current liability. In this example, current asset is 2,20,000, current liability is 1,70,000. Therefore, current ratio is 1.29. What is the next question? The next question is, liquid asset ratio they wanted to ask they wanted to solve you the form the question that is liquid asset ratio what is a liquid asset you can see a liquid asset is nothing but an asset which can, which is easily converted into cash your debtors amount receivable from your customers are called debtors your bank balance the both 80,000 plus 50,000 are called liquid assets or which are easily convertible into cash, easily available. Therefore, liquid asset is equal to 1,30,000. Now, let us see the formula for liquid assets ratio. The liquid asset ratio is equal to LA divided by CL. What is LA? It is not Los Angeles. It is liquid assets. Liquid assets divided by current liability, CL, current liability. Liquid assets, we have found out 1,30,000 divided by current liability, 1,70,000. Therefore, liquid asset ratio is equal to 0.76. Now, let us see what is the next question asked. They said, find out current assets to capital employed ratio. So, current assets to capital employed ratio is equal to current assets divided by capital employed. Friends, current assets you know 2,20,000 and you should know what is capital employed. You see, capital employed is equal to, very, very important, capital employed is equal to current assets minus current liability that is working capital plus fixed assets. Current assets minus current liability plus fixed, fixed asset is equal to capital employed. Current asset is 2,20,000. Current liability is 1,70,000. And fixed asset is equal to 2,40,000. So current assets minus current liability is 50,000 plus 2,50,000. It comes to 3 lakh rupees. Therefore, capital employed is fixed assets plus working capital. In other words, Capital employed is equal to, you can see the balance sheet, capital employed, your capital, that is the long-term funds, 
long term funds consists of share capital 1 lakh reserves 1 lakh debentures 1 lakh that is what is called the total long term funds that long term funds 1 lakh plus 1 lakh plus 1 lakh shareholders funds plus long term liability so shareholders funds is 1 lakh plus reserves and surplus 1 lakh plus long term liability is 1 lakh therefore capital employed is equal to 3 lakh rupees the all these are very very simple things but very very important if you are not able to follow the the way in which i have explained to you you will find it difficult to understand the problem even though it is very simple but very very important the concept of arriving capital employed my dear friends i repeat capital employed is a capital invested by the owners and the amount from long term borrowings that is why the shareholders capital plus resource and surplus plus debentures that is long term borrowings carrying interest 3 lakh in other words capital employed is equal to fixed assets plus working capital working capital is ca minus c that is 3 lakh this is how you have to find out the capital employed now coming to the ratio the ratio is current assets divided by current uh, ca capital employed you can see current assets to capital employed ratio is equal to current assets divided by capital employed current asset is 2 lakh 20000 divided by capital employed is 3 lakh the ratio is 0.73 now we are going to analyze what the question asked under item b is comment on the liquidity of Bharat Pump Limited. The balance sheet we have seen. Now we are going to see the liquidity status, liquidity position of Bharat Pump Limited. For liquid assets, the stock and prepaid expenses should be excluded from the current assets because we are considering the assets or the short term assets which can easily convert it into cash now we are going to comment on the ratios liquidity position friends the current ratio and liquidity ratio are used for finding the liquidity position of the institution or the organization the standard current ratio or the standard norm or the safe position of current ratio is 2 is to 1. That means in order to have a standard ratio, two times of current liability must be current assets. That means if current asset is 2, current liability may be 1. Here you can see current asset is 2.2 and current liability is 1,70,000. The standard current liability must be 1,10,000 because current asset is 2.2, 2,20,000. Therefore, current liability may be 1,10,000. Instead of current liability 1,10,000, it is given as 1,70,000 actual position. That means the current assets 2,20,000 is sufficient enough to pay 1,70,000, but it is not very easy that means suppose you are finding it difficult to convert your current assets into cash you find it very difficult to repay or to liquidate the short term liability of 170000 that is why the standard norm or the standard ratio is fixed as 2 is to 1 that ratio is according to the recommendation of core committee the minimum current ratio should be 1.33 is to 1. By making the above measurements, the Bharat Pump Limited current ratio is less at 1.29 is to 1. You can see the current ratio here. 
what is the current ratio percentage is given on the top current ratio is 1.29 whereas the standard norm is 2 is to 1 it is instead of 2 is to 1 it is 1.29 is to 1 which is below the above two standards the Barrett's firm current ratio is less than the standard norm in the standard norm minimum standard is 1.33 is to 1 standard ratio is 2 is to 1 minimum standard ratio is 1.33 is to 1 whereas in our company Barrett's firm limited the current ratio is 1.29 is to 1 which is below the above two standards how to solve this problem we have to find out the current assets by way of long term funds you can see the balance sheet this is very very practical situation very very important for our practical uh, situations in our business organization if you invest current assets out of current liability alone the ratio may be 1 is to 1 current asset is x amount 2 rupees current liability is 2 rupees means entire current asset is out of current liability if current asset is not able to liquidate immediately the current liability that is the amount payable to salary employees salaried employees the amount payable for purchase of raw materials the amount payable for rent, electricity, water charges, day-to-day -day expenses, emergency purpose, you are not able to make the payment on timely manner. You are not able to purchase the raw material for production. In that scenario, there is a liquidity problem. That is what is happening in our day-to-day -day life, my dear friends. There are people who are investing in very big houses, purchasing very costly car and investment in various luxury items for personal use, unproductive items with a huge borrowing and your salary may not be sufficient to repay the loan. That means your salary is your income or some other miscellaneous income may be there. So salary plus interest on deposits, if any, or some other miscellaneous income or agricultural income, and you are investing or purchasing a car or constructing a house with a huge amount of borrowings. What will happen? Your salary is not sufficient enough to make the e e equated monthly installments. This is what is called a liquidity problem. Here, many companies in India, many corporates in India are not studying this situation properly. In this COVID scenario, they, most of the corporates, most of the business units, most of the people in our country find it very difficult to solve or to find out the leak the the immediate payment of salary rent electricity loan repayment etc because they don't have a sufficient current assets they don't have a sufficient money for day-to-day -day operation but friends they are very good investment in land building furniture missionary etc what is the situation? They have no money for day-to-day -day expense. You have invested in various long-term assets. Like I example I told you, there are many people who constructed houses. There are many non-resident Indians. There are many IT professionals after getting the employment. They are purchasing flat car with a huge amount of borrowings under the impression that they will get a huge amount of salary from abroad and they will be able to repay the loans. But unfortunately, when they lose the job, their bank liability will increase, the car loan will increase, whereas their income is not increasing, 
the interest and principal amount is interest increasing they are not able to pay the interest even many cases where they find it very difficult to make the payment of interest when there is a default in payment of interest default in payment of principal amount or loan installment then the account will become non performing assets and the bank will take action against the borrower and ultimately it will come to a family problem they have no money for purchase of medicine for treatment of their parents for traveling expenses for day to day food expenses day to day material or cloth purchase of cloth or other food items in the in the family they find it very difficult therefore this ratio is a very very critical ratio for the purpose of the existence of the institution so all of you should study this form this ratio as a very important tool for effective financial management effective fund management if you are not able to regulate manage your cash your receivables your inventory and you are repayables to employees payable for supply of raw materials day to day expenses then you will have to incur heavy loss why because you have no money for purchase of raw material if you are not able to purchase raw material what will happen your production will be affected there is no closing stock of finished products for marketing if you are not able to market it you are not able to generate profit and you are not able to repay the loan you are not able to make profit therefore this liquidity position liquidity problem is very very critical in any organization whether it is a hospital whether it is a school or college whether it is a church whether it is a charitable institution whether it is a factory whether it is a university or whether it is any house any individuals family investment that is why i said this working capital is the life blood in any organization what is happening if the blood is not circulating in your body you will die if the blood is not circulating in your body the person will die that is what is happening in the case of an institution or in a family if you are not having adequate working capital i repeat the working capital is the funds available for day to day activities you are a very rich man having lot of land building furniture a car but you have no money for purchase of medicine no money for purchase of uh, any essential commodities in the family you have to starve well, you can you see many families in, in in india during the covid season covid 19 flood all these we have seen struggles so proper management of funds by using the formula of current ratio the standard norm is 2 is to 1 i have seen many of my clients that means their current liability is 2 current asset is 1 and every month they are defaulting the repayment of loan they are defaulting the payment of salary employees are not happy they are defaulting the payment to suppliers of raw materials they are also finding it difficult and they will stop supplying raw materials and finally what is the, what is the situation their bank account will be freezed they will not be allowed to operate the bank account and their assets which is given as security for bank account loan will be attached legal action will be taken business will be closed their students education will be affected their 
family health condition will be suffered. Therefore, don't study these topics for the purpose of your examination. I know friends who are looking eagerly for preparing for the examination questions and answering it. But our purpose is not for examination alone. It is for your day-to-day -day activities. Then only you will become a, an expert professional, an expert manager. What do you mean by a management? A management is an art of making good results in the organization. If you are not giving proper advice, if you are not making good results in the organization by giving proper advice, the old theory of management will not work out, my dear friends. What is the traditional definition of management? Management is an art of make, getting things done through other people. No, today it is different. It is not the art of getting things done through other people. It is the art of making good results in the organization. If you are not able to make good results, you are you either you have to say goodbye to the management or the management will say goodbye to you. Therefore, you learn this formula. I know one of my students after attending the, my classes, we I happened to meet him after 20 years. And that time when he was attending a marriage function, he came to me and said, Sir, 20 years back, I attended your class. And you have explained the importance of current ratio, working capital, liquid ratio. At that point of time, my business was running very in a huge loss. And my current working capital was very less, minus working capital. Current assets divided by current liability was less than one, not two is to one. Then I found that this is the reason why I am making a loss. So I started changing my current ratio from less than one to more than two by investing in long term, by investing in current assets from long term borrowings or long term capital. Therefore, my current assets increase, current, li current liability remains the same and my ratio increases, I could survive the business and now I am making good profit. See, I was very happy to hear from him that because of this class, his total business changed from huge loss to very good profit. So, this is very important for your day-to-day -day life, your personal life, your business organization, your uh, advice to the management. Similarly, liquid ratio, as I told you, the standard liquid, liquid, liquid ratio is 1 is to 1. That is, current asset is 1, current liability must be 1. But in this case, in the case of Bharat Pump Limited, you can see the ratio is liquid asset is 0 0.76 ratio, 0 0.76 liquid assets ratio. Instead of 1.1 1 .1 is to 1, it is 0 0.76 is to 1. This is also lower than the standard level. The difference between current ratio and liquid ratio shows the stock level. So current ratio is 1.29 and liquid ratio is 0 0.76 that 0 0.53 relating to stock therefore let me conclude by saying that both the calculations regarding Bharat pump limited the short term solvency position is not up to the standard level this should be now what is the solution the solution is the current asset should be increased by way of long term funds you can see the balance sheet the importance of balance sheet the current assets consists of inventory debtors bank balance prepaid expenses that 80 plus 80 plus 50 plus 10 1 2 lakh 20 thousand must be from short term assets 1 lakh 70 short term liability 1 lakh 40 plus 30 and 
long term liabilities therefore the short term liability should be reduced and long term liability should be increased for the purpose of current assets that means the current assets should be 1 rupee from long term funds and 1 rupee from short term funds if you have 2 lakh 20 thousand rupees 1 lakh 10 thousand rupee from the short term liability and 1 lakh 10 thousand from the long term liability in this balance sheet you can see here 140 plus 30 170 instead it should be instead of 1 lakh 70 thousand it should be 1 lakh 10 thousand so 170 minus 110 60 thousand is to be from long term liabilities or long term funds either from dependents or from accumulated profit or from share capital then your liquidity position will be safe and the standard norms you can maintain so this is very very important for your practical situations so friends you have any questions on this you can chat or you can ask questions i hope it is clear to all of you now we are going to discuss the ratios various other ratios by considering a separate problem here complete the balance sheet and sales data by filling the blanks by using the following financial data earlier you have seen the balance sheet now we are going to complete the balance sheet based on the ratios that is this is an incomplete balance sheet in this balance sheet they have given left hand side liabilities right hand side assets share capital 25000 general reserve 26000 accounts payable blank total liabilities blank cash blank account receivable blank inventories blank planned and equipment blank total assets blank what is the data given net bar net worth 50% debt 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 by net worth is 50% asset test ratio what do you mean by asset test ratio asset test ratio is nothing but liquid ratio 1.1 total assets turnover ratio 1.6 times daily days sales outstanding in account receivable there is an account receivable of 40 days gross profit margin is 25 percent inventory turnover is five times and uh, you are required to prepare the balance sheet that is the question which is asked a very simple question but very important question the question is you are required to prepare the balance sheet and sales data by filling the blanks using the information now let us see how to find out account payable why how to find out cash balance how to find out account receivable why to, how to find out inventory and how to find out planned and equipment and how to find out sales and how to find out cost of goods sold you can look at this so net worth is equal to share capital plus resource and surplus the balance sheet is given share capital plus resource and surplus which is 25000 plus 26000 which is 51000 so net worth is given therefore they have given a ratio what is the ratio debt is to net worth debt is borrowing debt by net worth is 50 it is given you see 50 percent is 50 by 100 so here you can see 50 by 100 is equal to debt 
divided by it is not debit it is that debt you can avoid that i that divided by 51000 is equal to 50 by 100 therefore what is the debt that is equal to so 51000 divided by 100 into 50 so the equation is in order to find out the debt you can make use of the formula debt by net worth is equal to 50 by 100 therefore debt is equal to 50 by 100 into net worth net worth is given top 25000 plus 26000 therefore debt is equal to that net worth into 50 by 100 that is 25500 so that is given that is the loan amount so in the balance sheet account receivable is a debt amount receivable therefore 25500 so you can see the liability side of the balance sheet equity share capital is given account receivable general reserve is given account payable is not given therefore assuming that that debt is towards account receivable account payable therefore the amount is 26000 plus 25500 that is plus equity share capital that is the total of balance sheet so the total of balance sheet is given 76500 by putting the account payable as debt 25500 therefore the liability side is completed now let us go to the asset side cash account receivable inventories plan and equipment that is given as blank we are going to find out how to find out we are going to make use of asset test ratio as i told you asset test ratio is nothing but liquid assets ratio liquid asset ratio is liquid assets divided by current liabilities therefore la divided by current liabilities what is the current liability we have found out account payable short term liability so 25500 therefore liquid asset divided by 25500 is equal to it is given 1.4 so la divided by 25500 is equal to 1.4 by 1 therefore liquid asset is equal to 25500 into 1.4 that is equal to 35700 so liquid assets liquid assets in the balance sheet you can see the balance sheet is liquid assets we have to find out total liquid asset is given that is 35700 let it be there now total assets turnover total assets turnover ratio is given in the problem total assets turnover 1.6 here you can see total assets turnover is equal to sales that is the mathematical equation for total assets turnover is equal to sales divided by total assets that is 1.6 total assets we have found out in the balance sheet what is the total assets total liability must be equal to total assets therefore total asset is equal to total liability that is 76500 therefore sales divided by total assets is equal to 1.6 total liability is total assets therefore the 25000 plus 26000 plus 25,500 is total assets and therefore sale is equal to that 76,500 into 1.6 therefore turnover is 76,500 into 1.6 it is equal to 1,22,400 so sales figure we can return as 1,22,400 let it be there now we will proceed they said gross profit ratio the equation for the ratio or the mathematical equation for gross profit ratio is 
25% of sales that is sales into 25% is given as gross profit here the sale is 1,22,400 as you so see 1,22,400 into GP ratio 25 by 100 therefore gross profit is 30,600 now what do you mean by cost of goods sold it is given cost of goods sold formula you can see the formula of cost of goods sold is equal to this is very important the formula of cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit what is sales 122400 what is gross profit it is given as 30600 30, therefore cost of goods sold is equal to 122400 minus 30600 that is equal to 91800 now there is another formula given in the question what is that inventory turnover ratio what is the mathematical equation of inventory turnover ratio inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold divided by closing stock that is equal to 5 and cost of goods sold is given as 91800 and that is divided by stock is equal to 5 therefore stock is equal to 91800 divided by 5 that is 18360 so closing stock in the balance sheet you can see closing stock in the balance sheet is 18360 that figure we got it you can see the inventory value 18360 now there is another formula given what is that formula here in this question that is day sales outstanding in account receivable so we can make use of that formula that is debtors turnover ratio debtors turnover ratio that is credit sales divided by debtors that is what is the question uh, in the question debtors turnover ratio that is to be taken as 9 debtors turnover ratio you can see debtors turnover ratio that is credit sales divided by debtors that means credit sales what is a credit sales and 1,29,400 and divided by 9 that is treated as debtors. So the debtors value is 13,600 in the balance sheet account receivable as debtors therefore 13,600. So we have the value of inventories, value of account receivables and the balancing figure which is called the cash balance because we have asset test ratio and we have liquid assets 35,700 liquid assets consists of account receivable and cash that is 35,600 that 35,600 minus account receivable that is 21,500 that 22,100 I repeat the liquid asset is liquid asset is in this equation the liquid asset is 35,700 what is liquid assets liquid asset is equal to cash plus account receivable total liquid asset is 35,700 and we have stock or the debtors we have the debtors the which is found out as 13,600 so 13,600 is that is total liquid asset is uh, 35,700 so total liquid assets 13 minus debtors 35,700 minus debtors is 13,600 which is treated as cash 22,100 so cash is given account receivable is given inventory is given now what is planned and missionary friends 
if the total asset is 76500 and the, the cash is given account receivable is given inventory is given therefore the plant and missionary is the balancing figure plant and missionary is nothing but the balancing figure so the debtors turnover ratio of nine times is obtained by making use of the information that there is that day sales outstanding in account receivable 40 days that is how we are arriving nine times now we are getting the results of all the figures in this question so plan and missionary value you can see 35700 minus 13600 plan and missionary value total assets minus current assets 76500 minus all current assets 22400 so this is the advantage of ratios by getting the ratio you are required to prepare a balance sheet and the sales and cost of goods sold the cost of goods sold also you have found out that is the method of finding out the missing figures in the balance sheet the missing figures in the balance sheet i repeat we have the information in this information they have given certain ratios based on the ratios you are required to find out the balance sheet and trading results for that purpose we are finding out the ratios and available figures which is given available figures are equity share capital general reserve no other figures are given but all other information we are taking from this uh, what you called uh, uh, the information given what is the information given debt divided by net worth it is not debit debt that is borrowing or payables debt divided by net worth is 50 percent asset test ratio is liquid ratio liquid assets divided by current liability total turnover ratio is the total assets by total turnover that turnover by total assets 1.6 times day sales outstanding in account receivable assuming that there are 360 days and 40 days is the amount the time limit for collecting the money from the customers i repeat the day sales outstanding in account receivable means the time taken for getting the money from the customer that is the credit period the credit period is 40 days assuming that in an year there are 360 days therefore nine times 360 divided by 40 is equal to nine and gross profit margin which means the formula is gross profit divided by i mean uh, the uh, gp ratio is equal to gross profit divided by sales into 100 that is 25 and inventory turnover ratio that is turnover divided by inventory five times so these ratios you have to learn you have to find you have, you should learn what is the formula for each ratio apply mathematics pure mathematics nothing else my dear friends this it, this issue it can be solved by using pure mathematics you must be master in mathematics in order to solve these problems and uh, find out the solution so we have used various formulas and we are applying the mathematics mathematical equation and finding out the figures and giving the answer for the university examination friends please note that all these are university examinations and very practical examination uh, questions now with this let me conclude the ratios now we are going to discuss uh, next chapter 
that is called the liquidity ratios and leverage ratios in detail. Sir, could you please explain the question paper pattern? Question paper pattern consists of problems and the theory part. Question paper pattern consists of problems and the theory part. Both. A question pattern, Shasana is asking. The answer is, it is a combination of theory and problems. The problems may be from uh, cash flow, fund flow statement. Problems may be from working capital management, project financing. Then, Tarsana, uh, how many bar seats? It is based on the uh, the problem, the uh, the grading, grading, the percentage of grading A, B, C, D, etc. You can get it from the Igno site. What is the percentage for A grade, B grade, C grade, D grade, etc. So A is excellent, B is uh, good, very good, C is good, D is uh, satis I mean, satisfactory, and D e is poor, like that. A, B, C, D, E. Excellent, very good, good, satisfactory, poor. Try now to mark attendance. Attendance, I hope uh, Tom Sar can do it. Uh, I don't know how to mark the attendance at this point of time. Yes. We will need to solve. We will need to solve few problems to get the concepts into mind. If there are any problems set apart from the ones in this slide that please to share with us sir yeah whatever is available we will share it to you through this presentation now i hope uh, you have understood how many marks for how many marks for theory questions and how many marks for problem questions uh, theory questions and problem questions uh, I can explain to you tomorrow regarding the pattern of questions and the the, the, uh, the grading aspects. Sir, what about assignment submission? Uh, friends, assignment submission is called a tutor mark assignments. You are required to uh, contact the regional center or the study center for getting more information about the assignment questions previous problems last section was not clear sir well you know uh, Safna can you uh, unmute and ask this particular question Safna can you unmute which question you are referring yeah. uh, last question sir uh, relating to what that is preparation of balance sheet and uh, Trading results. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, under this, which part is not clear to you, madam? You are calling from which place? Which part of India? I am from Kori uh, Kori, Calicut, sir. Okay. So, there is a question. Ratios are given. You are required to prepare the balance sheet. Tell me yeah, which, yes. which area is not clear to you? If uh, the you last. Mean, uh, yeah. The last section, sir, plans, machinery, uh, the uh, total assets minus current assets. Rest I okay. could not get it. Okay, okay. So, uh, you would like to know how you got plant and equipment value as rupees 22,440. Is it not, Safina? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, here, 
you know what is the total assets any doubt regarding total assets total asset is 76500 you have any doubt mm. because uh, total uh, liability uh, because total liability you know what is the total liability you just to see the screen uh, total liability 76500 uh, so what is the accounting principle of a balance sheet whether uh, cap asset li liability total liability must be equal to total assets yes sir therefore can we take total liability 76500 as total asset 76500 do you agree with me uh, yes sir okay so you got 76500 as total assets okay yeah. you know how we have arrived cash balance 22100 uh, no, sir, I have little doubt on that. Okay, cash balance, you have doubt. Have you yes. understood how you arrived at account receivable 13,600? Uh, account uh, receivable? Uh, Any doubt? Uh, um, Not clear? Yes. Account receivable, is it clear to you? No, sir. Uh, no. Inventories, is it clear to you? Inventories, 18,360. No. Yeah. It's... Or yes. Okay. Yes or no? Inventories. Uh, no, sir. Okay. Now, let us see. Can you see this screen? Okay. Can you see this screen? Yes, sir. Okay. In this screen, you can see next screen. I am going to the next screen. Okay. Right. I am going to the next next screen. Okay. Starting with the what what is the formula for gross profit? What is the formula for gross profit? Gross profit divided by sales into hundred is gross profit, is it not? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Gross profit ratio is what? Gross profit into Gross profit is equal to sales into gross profit ratio. Am I correct? Uh, yes, sir. So, gross profit is equal to sales into 25 percent. Mm. You know how you, how you got sales figure 120 to 400? 120 to 400. That is sales figure. Uh, okay. Yeah. Earlier, earlier screen. You have found out sales. Do you remember? Last line. Yeah. Okay, sir. So you got sales. What is the sale value? Uh, One lakh twenty-two thousand four hundred. Very good. Then what is gross profit? Uh, gross profit means uh, uh, thirty thousand six hundred. I think so. Which? How you got? Um, Sales into sales into, into gross profit ratio. Ah, that is you see first line. Uh, yeah. Sales into EP ratio. Yes, sir. That is thirty thousand six hundred. Six hundred okay. Clear. Then oh, yes, sir. what is what is the mathematical equation for cost of goods sold? Next uh, sales minus gross profit. So what is sales? Uh, one lakh twenty-two thousand four hundred. And what is gross profit? Uh, Thirty thousand six hundred. What is then cost of goods sold? Um, uh, ninety-one thousand eight hundred. Yes. Then tell me what is the inventory turnover ratio? Um, cost of goods sold by stock ratio. Uh, not raised, means, uh, yes cost of goods sold divided by stock that ratio yeah. is inventory turnover ratio left hand side is inventory turnover ratio uh, okay right hand side is cost of goods sold divided by stock not stock ratio stock okay okay sir that is given in the question as five do you remember in the question what? this given as five see Last line, uh, inventory uh, turnover uh, ratio. Uh, okay, so yes, we sir. have taken 
so we have taken 5 cost of goods sold divided by stock is equal to 5 what okay, is cost yeah. of goods sold and uh, 91800 ah, divided by x amount uh, or x what is stock divided by stock is 5 therefore stock is equal to 91800 divided by 5 is it clear to five. you yes yes sir clear the, so inventory or the stock is clear so that figure we are taking in the balance sheet inventory 18360 okay. 18360 is given yeah oh. now we will come to debtors the uh, that uh, debtors turnover ratio, debtors turnover ratio, not debit turnover ratio. It is debtors turnover ratio. Okay. See, see what is the formula for debtors turnover ratio? It is given there. What is the formula? Yeah, credit. The credit sales by debtor. Yes, credit sales divided by debtor. What is the yes. credit sales? Assuming that the entire amount is credit sales. Yeah. So. Credit sales is one lakh twenty-two thousand four hundred divided by debtor. Nine divided by debtor is equal to nine. Okay. Therefore, okay. you know how you got nine. Is it given in the question? Uh. Whether anywhere it is given as nine debtor's turnover ratio. No. No. Anything given relating to days sales outstanding in account receivable? Yes, 40 days. Ah, assuming that there are 360 day working days in an year. Okay. Therefore, out of 360 days, the time given for recovery of amount from customers, what is the credit period allowed? Um, 40. Is given 40 days. Is it not? 40 days is given. Yes. Okay, okay, mean? sir. What do you mean by 40 days means the amount to be collected from the customers is called account receivable time limit. That is credit period. Therefore, okay. debtors turnover ratio is equal to 9. How do you get 9? 360 divided by 40. 40. Therefore, that 9 is given. Okay. So, credit sales divided by 9 is equal to 13,600, which is that is. You got okay. that is? Um, what is the amount of that is now? Uh, uh, 13,600. Yeah. So, you have put account receivable. They are called a debtors. 13,600. Clear? Standard. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, earlier we have found asset test ratio. Do you remember asset test ratio? Uh, yeah. Uh, under asset test ratio, by making use of asset test ratio, you got liquid assets. Do you remember? Uh, yes, sir. What is liquid assets? Mm -hmm. At the screen, what is the amount of liquid assets? Uh, like uh, 10, uh, 25,500. No. In one. No, it is given liquid assets, middle. What is the uh, amount? 30, 35,700. Yes, 35,700 is liquid assets. What oh, are the yes. components of liquid assets? What are the items coming under liquid assets? Um, um, say, liquid uh, assets. Current line. Liquid assets means what? Amount or assets which are easily convertible into what? Liquid assets. Liquid. What do you mean by liquid? Um, is flexible or it can be converted into cash. Oh, okay, sir. So, what is the total of liquid assets? Uh -huh. Total of liquid asset is how much? Uh, uh, 35,700. Ah, so, the liquid assets consist of cash and account receivable. 
clear uh, uh, yes uh, account receivable is how much accounts receivable you see the balance sheet account receivable um uh, 13600 ah so cash plus account receivable is liquid assets okay so 35700 minus Account receivable is 13,600. Therefore, liquid asset is equal to cash plus account receivable. Clear? Yes, sir. Liquid asset is 35,700. Account receivable is 13,700. Therefore, cash is equal to 35,700 minus 13,600, which is equal to cash. What is the amount of cash? Um, 22,100. That is given uh, in the next page. You can see. You see? Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Account receivable. Cash is equal to liquid assets plus account minus account receivable. Liquid asset is 35,700. Account receivable is 13,600. Therefore, cash is equal to how much? You see the top. Uh, uh, cash. What is 22,000. 22, uh, 22, yes. So that is what uh, is shown in the cash as 22,100. Yes, sir. Clear? Uh, yes, sir. Account receivable and the debtors are the same. It's a different term for debtors, account receivable. The term account receivable is a substitute for debtors. Clear? Okay, sir. Now, what is the total of balance sheet? Asset side? Um, 76,500. Clear. So, you can see yeah. the last item, plan and machinery. Oh, yes, sir. Can you read? Yes, sir. Can you read? Yes, sir. Plans, machinery, so the total assets minus current assets. Ah. That is equal to? Uh, that is equal to um, uh, total assets, uh, which means 76,500 minus um, 22,100 plus 13,600 plus 18,360. Is equal to? Uh, 22,400. Is it correct? Balance? Yes, sir. Have you understood yeah. everything? Yes, sir. Now it's clear. Very good. This this uh, the, your question will help all the students who are attended the program. Therefore, yes, uh, don't hes hesitate to ask questions. Most welcome. I hope. Uh, what is this? Safna will remember this problem always. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. Thank you. No. Uh, thank you, sir. Welcome. Understanding the concept is very, very important. I remember one, uh, one girl went to a clinic and met the dentist. She would like to uh, remove her teeth. And she asked the doctor, what is the cost? Then the doctor said, uh, it is 1000 rupees. She said, uh, I find it difficult to make payment of 1000 rupees. Can you give me a discount? Then the doctor said, yes, I can give discount. But only thing is, I can remove your teeth without giving anesthesia. Then the girl said, no problem. I don't want anesthesia. Kindly remove my teeth. Then the doctor started removing and the girl was smiling. And gradually the doctor completed the removal. And uh, the doctor asked that girl why it was not paining. Then uh, she, she said uh, there was no pain for me at all. Then the doctor said, this is the first time in my history that I could uh, remove the teeth without anesthesia and not having any pain. 
so the doctor said uh, i can i have i was planning to give you discount and to pay only 500 rupees but this is my first experience you need not pay anything completely free that day evening the doctor explained to his team of officers doctors who came for a meeting and he explained to other doctors about this incident that uh, he, the girl came for removal of the teeth and uh, without anesthesia i did it there was no pain for her then one of the doctors came to that doctor and said what is her name the doctor had said uh, it is sindhu sindhu is her name oh then that doctor said she came to my clinic and took anesthesia and went away and came to your clinic so that is what is happening in today's world if you are not properly understanding the things even that girl had already gone anesthesia from another doctor and she just vanished from there and came to another doctor and asked for the discount and she got it done without any fees and she went away now before we conclude let me come to another situation of the ratios that is you can see the screen explain the meaning and uses of the following one liquidity ratio i have already explained the meaning of liquidity ratio to leverage ratio before that i have already told you a ratio is a relation between two figures and this is in general i must say the ratios fundamental classification of ratios the classification relating to solvency under solvency short term solvency long term solvency under short term solvency liquidity ratio current ratio under long term solvency leverage ratio debt to equity ratio interest coverage ratio debt to total assets ratio and with regard to the profitability it depends on two areas activity and leverage ratios so current ratio i have already explained to you i need not spend time on that current liabilities i have already told you liquid ratio already explained liquid liabilities i have explained use of liquid ratio already explained turnover ratio i have explained and uh, debtors turnover ratio all this we have make use of this in the problem itself inventory turnover ratio all these are theory parts which you can learn from the books which uh, requires no explanation creditors turnover ratio long term solvency ratio we will come to long term solvency ratio second part of our discussion is long term solvency ratio first one is debt equity ratio it is the relation between the debt and equity in financing fixed assets of a firm i repeat you have the balance sheet you have the assets in that assets how you have utilize the funds whether it is from long term funds or it is from short term funds a debt to equity ratio is a relation between the long term debt and the equity how much you have utilized from your own funds how much you, you have utilized from borrowed funds so the last line of this page debt to equity ratio is equal to long term debt divided by shareholders funds very very important how much is your own funds how much is your borrowed funds that relation with regard to long term funds i said 
long term funds are divided into two categories one on funds to loan funds the debt equity ratio is a relation between on funds and long long funds so long term funds therefore the debentures and fixed deposits term loan shareholders funds include the equity share capital preference share capital and reserves and surplus excluding accumulated loss so total long term debts includes term loan debentures fixed deposits shareholders funds and equity share capital preference share capital reserves and surplus accumulated loss will come in the asset side of the balance sheet this ratio can be called debt to net worth ratio debt equity ratio is determined to ascertain the soundness of long term financial policies of the company that means an ideal ratio is however a low ratio which gives more caution to the outsiders that means if your loan is more then your fixed cost is more because you are required to pay interest your own funds you are required to pay dividend only if there is a profit so the higher ratio more than one shows the claim of creditors are greater than those of owners you can see the last line debt equity ratio is long term debt divided by short term funds shareholders funds shareholders are owners total long term debt out of total long term debt divided by shareholders funds so the ratio is a relation between these two and these two aspects of the leverage ratios namely higher leverage and low leverage ratios so we are now coming to leverage ratio what do you mean by leverage ratio a capital structure ratio of capital gearing ratio this is what is called leverage ratio a leverage ratio indicates the relationship between fixed interest bearing securities that is long term securities and non fixed interest bearing funds that is your capital funds in the business this ratio is very much useful to examine the long term solvency of the firm you can see the chart in order to measure the long term solvency you have to see the ability to repay the principal or the ability to pay the interest regularly whether you are able to pay the interest whether you are able to pay the principal that is how you have to measure the long term solvency with regard to the principal debt equity ratio debt to total assets ratio with regard to the interest interest coverage ratio debt service coverage ratio that means whether your funds are sufficient enough to repay the loan and pay the interest that is what is mentioned in this interest coverage ratio that means whether you have the capacity to pay the interest out of the funds generated from business operation those ratios are given debt service coverage ratio debt service coverage ratio is equal to earnings before interest and tax divided by interest plus principal repayment on installment if you are calculating the tax rate that also can be considered so debt service coverage ratio that is your earnings your income your surplus divided by interest and installment that means your principal plus interest is called a equated monthly installment or annual payment of loan plus interest your profit your surplus divided by what is the liability towards interest and principal the funds available divided by the interest and loan principal amount 
that is what is called a debt service coverage ratio i repeat debt includes interest and loan repayment whether that interest and loan repayment that is the denominator and the numerator is earnings before interest and tax before paying tax before paying interest what is the funds available that is divided by the annual repayment of loan plus interest if that ratio is less than one you have no capacity to pay your debts if it is more than one that means your fund available is more your repayment and interest is less therefore you are comfortable that is what is called a debt service coverage ratio very very important so that is the leverage now we have a particular problem that also we can discuss if time permits how many delegates here let us continue i am giving you a situation where three forms namely a b and c in the case of a quantity sold is 20000 b 10000 c 3000 see i am not explaining the theory part in detail because you will understand the theory by giving this example that is what i believe but practical examples are more easy for you to understand the theory part therefore thank you for giving me this opportunity to extend your class for another 15 minutes all of you may please con continue with me i am here hope you are also there now this is a question quantity sold selling price for three firms form a form b form c selling price is given quantity sold is given variable cost is given 15 30 40 40 fixed cost is given 40000 70000 1 lakh interest is given 10000 20000 40000 40, preference dividend is given 5000 5000 10000 number of equity shares 10000 12000 15000 and the tax rate is given this tax rate means income tax rate 40% 50% 60% so please understand the problem the problem says there are certain information quantity sold selling price variable cost fixed cost interest preference dividend number of equity shares and the tax rate is also given what is the question your question is calculate degree of operating leverage of for the firms degree of operating leverage for the firms degree of financial leverage degree of combined leverage and earnings per share so first of all we should know the formula for dol degree of operating leverage dfl degree of financial leverage dcl degree of combined leverage and eps that is called it is not the name of political party it is earnings per share eps right now the question is very simple but the answer is not very simple we have dol dfl dcl the cost the information given is very clear now let us solve the problem friends please follow me starting with the calculation of profit before interest and tax after interest and tax and what is the balance available for the shareholders we can see the particulars column in the particular column quantity sold selling price total sales variable cost 
contribution, fixed cost, earnings before interest and tax, interest, profit after interest and tax, tax, profit after interest and tax, and available to shareholders. That is the purpose of this computation. You, when you are presenting your statement, make it very systematic, very scientific, structured, which is easily understandable to outsiders. I am not concentrating on your exam. I am concentrating on your practical purpose. Because you are, you have to become a good professional, a management expert, not by getting a degree from IGNO, a certificate from IGNO, rather than understanding the problem and you making use of this in your organization. Otherwise, the holding the degree is not at all useful. Here, our question is DOL, DFL, DCL. And what is the formula for DF, DOL? Then you will get more interest in this. The degree of operating leverage is equal to contribution divided by EBIT. Contribute, not contribute, it is contribution. EBIT means earnings before or profit before interest and taxes. DFL is equal to earning before interest and taxes divided by earning before interest and taxes minus I. Friends, I stands for interest. I for interest. Oh, sorry. Uh, I for interest. Sorry. Uh, then degree of combined leverage is a product of DOL and DFL. DOL into DFL is equal to DCL. And finally, you are required to calculate EPS, earning before interest and taxes. That earning before interest and taxes you can calculate by calculating profit after interest and taxes by number of equity shares. Therefore, before you present your statement, you should know what is the purpose. The purpose is 1 DOL, formula contribution divided by earning before interest and tax. For that, you should know what is contribution, what is earning before interest and tax, and what, how to calculate. Similarly, DFL is equal to earning before interest and tax divided by earning before interest and tax minus I, that is after interest, I stands for interest. And degree of combined leverage, that is heck, multiplication of combined leverage means a combination of DOL and DFL, that is DOL into DFL is equal to DCL. And finally, you are required to calculate earnings per share, which means what is the earning out of particular share value. Suppose 2 rupees is the earning, 10 rupees is the face value, then what is the earning per share, 2 rupees out of the share shares, that is the purpose of this question. By solving this, you are going to understand lot of things with a small example. Let us start with the, the computation part. We are computing 1, sale value, 2, variable cost, 3, contribution, contribution is equal to sales minus variable cost and fixed cost which is given and contribution minus fixed cost is equal to earning before interest and tax which is also called operating profit. From the operating profit, you deduct interest, then you will get profit after interest and before tax. Once you deduct tax, you will get profit after interest and taxes. But after explaining this, your work is only tabulation, my dear friends. 
you have to just tabulate whatever is required let us start quantity from the question you tabulate you take this because 20 10 3000 you can see a b c three firms 20 10 3000 selling price i am just taking from your question 20 50 100 20 50 100 sale value number of units into sale price 20000 into 20 total sales 4 lakh 10000 into 50 total sales 5 lakh 3000 into 100 total sales 3 lakh variable cost you can see it is given 15 rupees per unit 30 rupees per unit 40 rupees per unit come to this calculation variable cost that is 20000 into 15 3 lakh 10,000 into 30, 3, 3 lakhs, and 3,000 into 40, 1 lakh 20,000. You can see 15, 30, 40. Therefore, you have sales, you have variable cost. Those who are not familiar with the contribution, please note down this formula. Contribution is equal to sales minus variable cost. Without understanding the formula, it is very difficult for you to learn. I repeat, contribution is equal to sales minus variable cost. So, once you deduct variable cost from sales, you will get contribution. 4 minus 3, 1 lakh. 5 minus 3, 2 lakh. 3 minus 1.2, 2, 1 1.8 lakhs. Contribution is there. Then, you wanted to know operating profit, operative profit means contribution divided by fixed cost. From where you got fixed cost? Fixed cost is 40,000, 70,000, 1 lakh. You can see fixed cost, 1 lakh minus 40, earning before interest and tax or which is also called operating profit. 1 lakh minus 40,000, 60,000, 2 lakh minus 70,000, 130, 1 lakh 80 minus 1 lakh 80,000. From where you will get interest, we can see interest is given. Interest is given in the question 10,000, 20,000, 40,000. <coughs> that is what we have taken here. Interest 10, 20, 40. So, EB, operating profit minus interest. That is. <coughs> EBAT minus interest is equal to profit after interest and before tax. 60 minus 10, 50. 130 minus 20, 110. 80 minus 40, 40. Now we are going to apply the tax rate. What is the tax rate? 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent. So by calculating the tax, that is 40 percent of how do you get the tax 40 percent of 50,000 20,000 and 50 percent of 1 lakh 10,000 55,000 then 60 percent of 40,000 24,000 so profit after interest before tax 50 110 40 tax 20, 55, 24. Profit after interest and tax available to shareholders. Therefore, 50 minus 20, 30,000. 110 minus 55, 55,000. 40 minus 24, 16,000. So, that is a profit after tax, uh, profit after interest and tax. I repeat, profit after interest and tax. That means, the shareholders should get dividend or the sharing of profit only after making interest and tax. That is why it is called a profit after interest and tax available to equity shareholders. Therefore, we have all the data available. Now, we have to make use of this data in the formula. That is all today. You see the DOL contribution by ebit contribution is given in the previous page 1 lakh 2 lakh 180 
one lakh, two lakh, one eighty contribution. Then EBIT, EBIT is given. What is EBIT? Sixty thousand one thirty eighty. You can see operating profit sixty thousand one thirty eighty. Therefore, D O L <coughs> is equal to one point six six one point five three eight two point two five. Then degree of financial leverage D E B I T minus divided by E B I T minus I. That is E B I T. You know E B I T is operating profit sixty one thirty eighty. E B I T minus I. That is after interest profit after interest before tax fifty hundred and ten forty. You see fifty hundred and ten forty. Therefore the ratio is. One point two two, one point one eight, and two. And friends, D C L is the product of D O L and D F L. Two, one point two, four point five. Uh, I am going to conclude with the last line. The last line is earnings per share. Earnings per share is E P S. The profit available to equity shareholders are given. As thirty, fifty, five, sixty. So profit available to equity shareholders that is thirty thousand divided by number of equity shares. Number of equity shares given in the problem ten. Therefore, thirty thousand divided by ten thousand per share three rupee. Similarly, B. Similarly, C. Therefore. The question asked is D O L D F L D C L. Answer is D O L is contribution by E B I T. D F L is E B I T by E B I T minus I. E B I T means operating profit, earning before interest and tax. D C L is D O L into D F L. That is degree of operating leverage into degree of financial leverage. That is D S L. And finally, earnings per share. That is what is the profit available divided by number of equity shares. Then a person or a shareholder can learn that his earning, his profit per share, one share, he will get. In the case of firm A, three rupees. In the case of firm B, four rupees fifty-eight paise. And in the case of firm C, one point zero six rupees. Friends, this is the answer to this question with regard to leverage.